Today we're going to go over factorials, word problems, decimals and percentages, and some basic algebra. And since my name is Jody with the Y, we got to do it the J way. J -way. That, that's Jody with the But let me put on my glasses first. The Air Force gave me these for free. First, we're going to look at factorials. A factorial is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to a given positive integer and denoted by the integer in an exclamation point. Write that. Basically, what a factorial means is you're going to take the number before the exclamation point and you're just going to times it by everything below it. So we're going to look at a problem. The problem is you have 10 factorial divided by 7 factorial. Now because you're dividing 10 factorial by 7 factorial, all this means is the 7 factorial cancels the 7 factorial above it. So you only have to multiply 10 times 9 times 8 because you've canceled out the seven and everything below it. So now all you have to do is some easy multiplication. The best way to do this is to multiply eight times nine, which is 72, and then multiply 72 times 10, which is 720. I think that one was pretty easy. Now we're gonna take a look at a word problem. The word problem states, Dana and Megan have to fill 500 envelopes for a charity. At the end of the morning, Dana has filled 3 20ths of the envelopes and Megan has filled 1 4th of them. How many envelopes have they filled together? Now the first thing we do, because we have fractions, is we want to forget about that 500 envelopes for now and just add the fractions together. So if you try to add 3 20ths plus 1 4th, it doesn't work. So you have to find a common denominator for each. The common denominator for 20 and 4 is going to be 20. That's the first number that 4 and 20 can go into even. In order to make 4 turn into 20, we have to multiply it by 5. Not only do we have to multiply the 4 by 5, we also have to multiply the 1 above it by 5. And if we do that, we're going to have 5 over 20. Now, because both bottom numbers are the same, we can now add them and we'll get 8 over 20. Now, 8 over 20, we can break that down even further or simplify it. In order to do that, we'd have to find a number that goes into both 8 and 20. The one that I see is 4. 4 goes into 8 2 times and 4 goes into 20 5 times. So that breaks that fraction down instead of 8 over 20, it breaks it down to 2 over 5, which is 2 fifths. So 2 fifths, I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying that. That is the amount of envelopes that Dana and Megan have filled. So now we want to look at how many envelopes we started with. We started with 500 envelopes. Dana and Megan filled two fifths of them. The question is asking how many did they fill? I always try to find the easiest way to do problems like these. And the easiest way for me is to break down the fraction. It's saying two fifths. So I wanna know what one fifth of 500 is. And in order to do that, I just divide 500 by five and I get 100. So if I times that by two, that gives me 200. So now I know that two fifths of 500 is 200. Meaning that Dana and Megan filled 200 envelopes overall. So we just did a word problem with fractions. Now let's take a look at a word problem with percentages. It says 300 school children went on a field trip. 30% of them were first graders, 45% second graders, and the rest were third graders. How many more first graders were there than third graders? Now, if you look at this word problem, it doesn't tell you the percentage of third graders. So you got to figure that out. Since they told you the percentage of first and second, all you have to do is add the 30% plus the 45%, which gives you 75%, meaning that first and second graders total 75% of the kids who went on a field trip. If you subtract 75% from 100%, that leaves 25%. And that is a reflection of how many third graders were on this trip. So now that we know 25% of the field trippers were third graders, what is 25% of 300? You can turn 25% into a decimal, Basically, just put a decimal before the 25 and times that by 300, and that'll give you 75. We have just now determined that there are 75 third graders on this field trip. The question asks how many more first graders were there than third graders? So now we got to figure out how many first graders there are. I love when everything is rounded, even numbers, because it makes the math easy. So the word problem says that 30% of the field trippers were first graders. So instead of doing the math and multiplying 0.30 times 300, what we can do instead is ask what's 10% of 300? And that's easy math. 10 goes into 300 30 times. So if we know that 10% of 300 is 30, all you have to do is multiply 30 times three and that gets you 90. So now we know that there are 90 first graders and there's 75 third graders. 
The question asks how many more first graders are there than third graders? It's simple math now. You just subtract 75 from 90, which equals 15. Voila. So that was learning word problems, percentages, and decimals. Now we're gonna take a look at some basic algebra. We want to solve for 7a plus two equals 3a minus five plus 2a. The way I like to figure out this problem is I start with the side that has two variables. So on the right side, we have 3a plus 2a. I just add those up and that gives me 5a. Remember, we still have that negative five over there. So now I want to cancel out one of the variables from one of the sides. In order to do this, I'm going to subtract 5a on both sides. If I do it on the right side, 5a minus 5a gives me zero. It cancels that out. If I do it on the left side, 7a minus 5a gives me 2a. I want to do the same thing with the numbers. I want to cancel them out on one side. So in order for me to do this, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So we have a positive 2 minus 2 gives me 0. It cancels out the 2 on the left side. And we have a negative 5 minus 2 on the right side, which gives me negative 7. So now I have 2a equals negative seven. Now I want to divide that negative seven by that two on the left side. So I'm gonna bring it over and that gives me A equals negative seven divided by two. Now, if we look at the answers, they don't have that as an answer. So what this means is they want us to break this down even further. Now with negative seven over two, you can't divide two into seven equally. So the way we do this is we first see how many times two can go into seven. Two can go into seven three times at most because two times three is six. So we have the number three with the remainder of one. That one is your numerator and we keep the same denominator as before, which was two. So three and a half. Now, unfortunately, I can't go over everything with you in the ASVAB, but I have a solution for that. If you found this video tutorial to be helpful to you, there's a website called study.com which has tons of videos and other resources just like this that can help you all pass the ASVAB. Not only does it break down math knowledge, arithmetic reasoning, but it also has stuff for your word knowledge, your paragraph comprehension, the electrical stuff, the mechanical stuff, everything you need to know to get a good score on the ASVAB. There's a bunch of different quizzes that you all can take. And the best thing about this is you can do all of this through your phone. So you can basically study anywhere at any time. Study.com is normally about $60 a month, but with my link in the description box below, you can get that for $41.99 a month. The best part about it is once you're done with the ASVAB and you no longer need study.com, you can cancel and you don't have to pay that $41.99 a month anymore. So I highly recommend y'all check that out. If you all found this video to be valuable and you want me to create more videos like this, leave a comment in the comment box below and I can do that for you all. But before you go, if you're about to take the ASVAB and you're nervous about the test, did you know there's a way for you to take that test at home? I got a video on the screen right now that'll break it all down. Like I always say, I hope this video brought value to you. Stay beautiful, stay classy, and until next time, check me out.